Hey, what's going on guys? So uh, today I have my first impressions of this new Ozark Trail multi-tool that I picked up. Uh, if you saw my uh, Walmart knife specials for Christmas or holiday uh, 2020 video, I had mentioned that I was probably going to buy this and clearly I did. <laughs> I was very curious about it. I saw it was on sale for like $13 I think. Uh, now here's a joke and it's on me. Uh, I had assumed because it's on sale for $13 that originally it was like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, you know, who knows. I went online, went to walmart.com and they sell these for $13.97 all day long. It didn't look like it was a sale. Uh, I think at the time I checked there was two left, so I don't know if they're going to be out of stock or if they just, you know, say there's two to create some kind of pressure into you buying the thing and maybe they have 500 of them sitting there, who knows. Uh, but my point is that uh, I believe the regular price of this is like $14, and I got it on sale for $13. Sale. What's up with that? <laughs> a dollar? Really? A dollar. Come on, Walmart. If you're not uh, familiar, uh, Ozark Trail is an official Walmart branding. So it's not like they're buying these from someone else. Clearly, they're having some company make them for them and slap on the logos. However, they control the prices. So their online full non-sale price of $13.97 is the full price for this multi-tool. So to have it, you know, a little sale tag on there and take a dollar off, I feel like I was had, but anyway. Uh, besides the point, uh, I honestly think it's worth the $13 price tag or the $14 price tag if you're not lucky enough to find a sale. Anyway, here's my, uh, my thoughts on it so far. Uh, this is a couple days later after I bought it. I started using it a little bit and I do have some uh, initial impressions. Uh, first off, let's look at the box. Uh, these are also available, I believe, in clamshells, so you may not necessarily get a box if it, if, you know, prepackaged in a clamshell and it's on the, the shelf at your Walmart, that, that might be how you see it. Uh, obviously, my Walmart, or at least the one I went to in that video, which was in Honesdale, Pennsylvania, and I did have some locals I uh, mentioned on there, like, hey, it looks like my Walmart. Well, it is, maybe. Uh, it depends if you go to the Honesdale Walmart or not. Um, but anyway, um, they have a knife section, so if you have a knife case, generally speaking, you'll have some of these boxed away. You know, they have the display models, and obviously they look through the case and, and grab the one in the box. So this may or may not come with a box, is my point. Um, but here is the box, just shows 15 tools, so 15 in one multi-tool. Not much else uh, information on here other than 2020 Walmart Inc. So these were at least produced this year, uh, which is interesting. So, um, yeah, part of the reason why I wanted to try this uh, version of the multi-tool is because I was interested in the Ozark Multi-Force multi-tool for months and months. When they, they first hit the market, I want to say it was at least a year ago, maybe even two. I don't really recall. Um, but that looks like a Leatherman. Now, the Multi-Force sells for like $38 online. You can get it from Walmart.com. I don't know if there's other sellers for it or not. I think if you go on eBay, there are even more because uh, I did happen to see one on there for like 50 bucks. Uh, which defeats the purpose, by the way. I would not spend $50 on any Ozark Trail stuff at all. So, taking a look at this tool. Uh, first, before actually we do that, I want to talk a little bit about why I decided to get this. This is kind of the middle ground for Ozark Trail. Now, if you don't know what I'm referring to, uh, when you see their, you know, all their knife stuff that's on display, occasionally you'll see their, their cheapest multi-tool, which is the regular 4 or $5, wherever it happens to be. And uh, I've actually gotten that before, and it's total junk. I would definitely stay away from it. Not worth your time at all. Um, I wouldn't even give it to a gift, you know, for someone who you don't really like that much. It's just a waste of money. Uh, that's complete garbage to me. My opinion, my opinion only. Uh, maybe you share my opinion. Um, but, I mean, if you've never used one and you're curious, five bucks, go ahead. Just get it from the store and see what you think. But I thought it was total junk. Um... Now, on the other side of the spectrum, Ozark uh, offers a multi-force multi-tool, okay? They sell that for $38 pretty regularly, I think, through Walmart's website. And uh, from what I've heard, it's really good. Like, it's almost comparable to, like, a Leatherman, you know, a lower-end Leatherman. Uh, now, spending almost $40, yeah, you should definitely get a better quality tool. Is it going to be as good as the $50 and $60 and $70, you know, Leathermans? I don't really know. Eventually, maybe I'd like to try one out. But this fell right in the middle, okay? So you have like their super cheap, not even worth your time, $5 multi-tool. Then you have your, your their $38 multi-force multi-tool. This was right in the middle. It's like, and to be honest, my first impressions is it is right in the middle. It's way better than their $5 one. It's actually a very usable tool. 
Most of the tools in here are extremely usable, but it doesn't seem, you know, at least from pictures of what I've seen in the multi-force, uh, it doesn't seem like it's as effective as that, okay, or as refined, let's say. So first thing we're gonna look at is the sheath here. All right, got the Ozark brand on the front, Ozark Trail, uh, outdoor equipment, does fit very nicely as you would hope it would. All right, button snap on the front, nice tight little package. It only has the uh, sewn on loop on the back for your belt, all right, which is kind of tight. All right, so if you have like a wider, if you have a two inch belt, it might be kind of hard to get this through. Um, but for a standard belt, it's okay. I actually did try it real quick. Um, you know, nothing special. I definitely prefer to see you know things like button snaps, quick release, even Velcro. But unfortunately, it is what it is. Just a little sewn on strap. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Put that off to the side. Take a little zoom in on this. Get a better look at it. My first impressions <clears throat> is huge, 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 super chunky. Let me grab another multi-tool real quick to give you a comparison. All right, so just for comparison, this is the Leatherman Sidekick. Okay, so it, it looks small. It looks very small compared to this. Now this is, to me, is a full-size, you know, multi-tool. Uh, very similar design as well in that there's a lot of um, larger tools accessible from the outside. This is actually a pretty good comparison. I didn't do that on purpose. But, uh, but yeah, look at the, the difference here, you know. It's fat, it's huge, it's heavy, it's chunky, it's cumbersome. All right, that was my very first impression. You know, using a lot of multi-tools like this, I mean, you know, it seems pretty convenient. You know, it's not that big. I mean, I kind of thought, hey, this is kind of heavy and kind of big, until you try the Ozark Trail. Then it doesn't seem so big anymore. <laughs> so that's the that first, uh, first thing I thought, right? The second thing I thought was, this is really finished very nicely. Everything is super polished, like super, super polished, rounded. It's very, very comfortable to handle. It really reminds me more of the, um, you know, Victorinox Swiss tools. And it, it is finished that nicely. Now, that's the finish. The fit, maybe not quite on par with something like the Victorinox uh, Swiss tool line, but it's it's pretty close, to be honest. I mean, the, uh, the only issue I have, and it's obviously a larger issue, is these do have locking tools. You see these bars up top, which I'll show you in a second. I'll give you an example. But uh, they don't lock up. Awesome. And I think that's kind of because they rounded everything. You know, uh, it feels great in the hand and stuff, but every single tool just has a touch of play. Just a little touch of play, which is a little annoying. I mean, for $12, $13, $14, whatever you happen to pay for this one, uh, whether you get the sale or not, um, eh, it's kind of expected. You know, but it'd be it'd be really that much better if there was no play. If these just locked up nice, I'd, I'd be a happy camper. But they don't. Um, so before I even open the thing, you can see there is a pocket clip on uh, the outside, which is really nice. So you obviously have the sheath option for carry. But if you don't want to use a sheath, which a lot of you guys don't, uh, you do have the pocket clip, which is really nice, just like you have on this sidekick here. Very, very convenient. I know a lot of people like multi-tools. They like the idea of having multi-tool. If you have a, uh, a knife on your multi-tool, which this one does somewhere, there it is, all right, just like the, uh, the sidekick. If you have a main blade, all right, um, you might consider carrying this as your main knife, all right, so you have this on, you know, clip to your pocket. So puck clip is a very nice uh, addition to any multi-tool. Of course, uh, you could take that off if you didn't want it, all right, so if you knew, hey, I'm never ever going to clip this to anything, and I just want the comfort of not having a pot clip on there, you can carry it in the sheath and take that off. No big deal. Because everything's so smooth and polished, of course, it does carry very nicely in the pocket. Um, just to carry this around the house, I didn't EDC this or anything yet. Um, and I only have a couple days of use on this, but like I said, this is a first impressions uh, video. So, the main tool on here is our pliers. All right, if I'm quiet for a second, you can hear... <laughs> if I don't hit my tripod, uh, you can hear that those snap open. Let me back out a little again. All right, so these kind of snap into position here which is very nice. So that means they hold their position, all right, which is very good. Um, these are spring-loaded, which is awesome. Uh, because, again, because they're so large and kind of cumbersome, I do feel like when I was using the pliers, and again, this is limited time, maybe I'll get used to it, but uh, it's, a, it's a, a stretch here. So when this is fully open, those jaws are fully open, you need kind of a larger hand to grab that, okay? So if you happen to let go and you have a small hand, you might literally need to use two hands to get that. For comparison here, the sidekick, also spring-loaded, you can see the difference 
you know, in the jaws. This is just a little bit of a wider set handle. So even if you have a small hand, I mean, this is very easy. If I slipped off and that fully extended, I can easily grab it. It's not a big deal. Whereas this is a little bit of a reach for me. All right, I'm using the tool, whatever. Oh, I, you know, slipped. Eh, I can still do it, but uh, not as comfortable. Again, everything about this is bigger, chunkier, wider. Um, so, you know, generally it could be better for larger hands if you find you have small hands, if you find that, you know, on any kind of spring uh, loaded pliers or multi tools that, you know, it's a little wide for your grip, it's probably not going to work out for you very well. Um, so, that's something else that I, I happen to notice in, uh, in using it thus far. But the actual uh, jaws look really nice, uh, they line up fairly well. I do kind of like the cuts in here which is just, I guess, a design feature. Um, and yeah, you have wire cutters. I didn't get to try the wire cutters out yet. Uh, and obviously the two different style uh, of pliers. Um, I focus mostly, you know, on the blade and some of the other smaller tools that are in here, which we're gonna talk about right now. Again, compared to the Sidekick and some other models, it's nice to have those uh, uh, tools that are accessible from the outside, all right? In this case, we have our, our knife on one side, we have our saw blade on the other side. All right, but in this case, we have four tools that are accessible from the outside like this, you know, with uh, basically opening slots. We have a fully serrated blade. All right, you can hear that lock. And again, you just push on these bars to unlock it. Okay, really simple concepts, but here we go. A little bit of wiggle, little play. Now, when you're using this and you're actually cutting things, it's putting pressure towards the back here. You're not going to feel that play. It's not a big deal. This is just knife guy critiquing things, you know, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you do as well. So that might bother you, a little bit of wiggle. But like I said, actually using it, it's not gonna affect much. Uh, it is very easy to unlock. You can pull from the back of the pointer finger or push with your thumb. All right, and again, all you're doing, you can see how there's a cutout here. All right, again, super simple idea on how this actually works. And you know, this is copying some other multi-tools as well. It's not like their own concept. This is very well, or excuse me, very much uh, a known design for locks on multi-tools. But you can see there's a, a notch cut out on the back of each tool, all right? And a little uh, piece that protrudes out. So as you rotate this, it goes into that notch and locks it, okay? So you have to manually pull it out to unlock it. Um, because this is nicely rounded, I mean, I had no problem. It protrudes out enough. There's enough of a lip there. I could definitely see if you had wet hands or something, you go to unlock this and it's like slippery. Um, you can use both fingers, pointer and thumb, you know, pull on that for more security if you needed to. But again, initially, at least with dry hands, I had no problem at all unlocking this tool all right, or any of the tools so far. So uh, flipping over, we have our main blade, which is our plain edge blade. All right, highly polished. One uh, note as well is that um, even though I did use this, there were little dings and scratches and stuff already. All right, so it almost looks like it's a little bit used because there's like, you know, a little scratching here and there. Uh, because it is so polished, they don't like polish it up really nice and then, you know, put on, you know, white gloves and, and put them in boxes. I mean, they're kind of banging these things around before they actually make it to the packaging. So it almost looks like you're getting one that's slightly used, all right? Um, now here's my biggest issue. My biggest issue with this is out of the box, okay? This is before I started cutting stuff. Out of the box, this main blade had a chip in it. You can see it right there. Right there, there's a chip. Now if I, I do this sometimes with different knives, you can do this as well. You pull back, I mean, if you don't have long nails, which I don't, I trim my nails. If you have long nails, not a big deal, but for me, I pull back the skin on my finger so I can rest the edge of my nail on it. And if you run along the edge of your blade, you'll feel nicks and chips right here. You can feel that. Okay, so there's a, a nick or a chip. Everything else is fine, but right there, there's a major, and you may even be able to hear it. I'm quiet. But anyway, um, you can see, you can see the light reflecting on it right there. That's a pretty major chip. So um, that was out of the box. That's not for me cutting stuff. All right, so that's, you know, obviously disappointing. Again, for $13 price tag, eh, you know, it's just, it shouldn't be, you know, it's, it's definitely like, it's not like other $13 knives all have chips in it. That's definitely not a normal thing. However, I'm gonna look past it because I feel like that's not common. I feel like on this particular one, that has a little chip, but I don't think that's gonna be a regular thing. Of course, if you have this multi-tool, Please let me know in the comment section if yours happen to come with chips, but that seems kind of rare. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say that's, uh, you know, an individual issue and not something that all of the, the, the models have. Um, so yeah, close that. Flip it over. We have a um, uh, file, all right, double-sided file here, which is nice. Um, and then we also have a saw blade, okay, which looks effective. Have not tried this yet. And again, all the tools have a little bit of play. Let right, me get that saw or that uh, file out. You know, it's it looks because I'm wiggling the whole thing. It looks way worse than it is if I keep this really still. You can see with the actual play. It's ever so slight. In fact, if I try not to try not to move my finger, this is the actual movement from here to here. It looks dramatic because my whole finger is moving. It's not actually moving this much, and I'm moving my hand. I'm moving everything. So this looks like a lot of play, right? But <laughs> it's actually, it's just, it's ever so slight. But it's there. It's there. It's annoying. You know, obviously, like I said, if you're really into your gear, and you're checking all the time, and looking at things and fiddling with stuff, you open your blade, and you're like, yeah, it's cool, and you go check, and you're like, come on. So, yes, they all have uh, play besides the four main tools. And it is nice that they have a dedicated serrated blade, a dedicated plain edge blade. Uh, the files some people may or may not use. The blades everyone's going to use more than likely. Uh, the saw blade is actually very cool too, very, very useful. Um, not necessarily for cutting things down completely, but notching stuff, um, you know. Now, I generally use saw blades playing around than I, more than I actually need a saw blade. So for me, it's a little bit more of a novelty. Uh, when I'm camping and stuff, I do generally use the saw blades for things, but it's not necessarily something I have to have, if that makes sense. Uh, but it's a little bonus. Um, but yeah, so besides the, the major uh, four tools on the outside, on one side we have a Phillips head screwdriver, which I did try and does work totally fine. All right, very happy to have uh, seen that. Then we also have a pair of scissors, which actually I'm gonna close this because I wanna talk about the scissors a little bit. So we have folding scissors in here. All right, pull those down. Um, and they work, they work fine. They do cut stuff, but who sees the problem here? And it's not a huge problem. But it's a little bit of a problem. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad some of you guys saw that. Um, this scissor is a little bit less convenient being on the opposite side. What I really like in a scissor is when it's on, like it cuts on the side that I'm holding. And it might be hard to explain what I'm saying, but if this arm was flipped around so that I can use the scissor like this, it's way more comfortable. Okay, see how this tool is in this handle? I don't want to reach over this handle to access this because naturally as I push forward my thumb hits the other side of the tool. Do you know what I'm saying? So I have to really choke up on this so that I can get the full motion cutting. Naturally I want to hold it down here. I can't reach the scissors down here, right? If it was on the other side I could still reach the handle and use the scissors. So you know that's kind of a design oversight I'm gonna say and I'll just leave it at that. The scissors do work not as comfortable as I would uh, I would like or appreciate. All right, let's put those back. And that's it for this handle, I believe. Scissors, let me just double check there, make sure. Yeah, scissors and our Phillips on one side. On the other side, we have two tools as well. One has a nail nick. One has a little thing you pull out with your nail. So we have a dedicated flathead screwdriver. All right, and then we have the bottle opener combination screwdriver. Now, again, both of these tools have play, <laughs> just like every other tool. All right. Um, so here's my issue. Let's let's zoom in on this. So we have two flathead screwdrivers that are almost the same size. So if anything, I wouldn't even consider this a flathead screwdriver. I would consider this a pry bar. You know, I wouldn't over torque it. It'll probably snap and break. But you can use this for light prying jobs and stuff to save your knives. Um, you know if it's gonna perform for you for that uh, But yeah, you can see that the head on this is so close to the head on that if I put them right next to each other It's not that much different. Okay. It's not like one's large and one's small My other huge issue which I'm sure you already see is that again everything is so wonderfully smooth and rounded You do not want rounded screwdriver tips. Okay, you want nice square edges sharp edges so they fit into the screw heads properly and you can use that tool more effectively. All right, this is something that's very common on super cheap multi-tools, very rounded tools. Now, you know, initially it looks great. It's nice and smooth and finished and everything, but from a practical standpoint, you don't want, you know, you don't want a rounded screwdriver like that. 
all right so i mean if you've ever used these for screws they, they tend to slip a little bit more things like that so i do do want you know squared off edges and, and sharp angles for screwdrivers all right and i mean the bottle opener i haven't used yet i'm i'm sure it works fine so that is uh essentially what you got going on here i would say in this tool most used things would be the pliers themselves right, plier heads uh, as well as your main blade all right your plain edge blade maybe your uh, serrated blade as well now something else worth uh, mentioning here before i go is i talked about the scissors orientation was inconvenient however they did get the blades right which is nice all right so when you have a cutting edge you want that in line with the edge of the tool some multi-tools have like the blade edges like this okay uh, on the opposite end so when you're cutting things it's it's possible that you hit the actual tool on what you're cutting you don't want that you want it how they actually did it here okay the blade edge is in line so when you're holding this like a regular knife that cutting edge is you know close to where your fingers are the outside of your fingers you don't want blades all the way back here when you're cutting stuff okay you want them as far out as possible all right um same thing with the you know you flip it around and by the way this is righty friendly there are more righties than lefties but as you can see you know with your you know, holding like this you can access those blades with the right hand very easily if you use the left hand i'm not saying you can't do it but you have to kind of do that use the back of the the tool you know as a lefty not the worst thing in the world i suppose but you know convenient for righties um but yeah same thing we have our cutting edge in line with the edge of the tool okay so i could definitely appreciate that so i mean even though there's things i don't like about this certainly it's big it's cumbersome it's chunky the flathead screwdriver is the same size as the other screwdriver and they're both rounded and a little ineffective um you know the fact that every single tool wiggles a little bit i can look all past that for that 13 or 14 dollar price tag i would definitely recommend this for a beginner multi-tool if you want to get a multi-tool and you don't want to spend, you know, 40 bucks, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever it happens to be for all the good ones everyone else has. Uh, you know, Sidekick, Leatherman Sidekick, I, I would definitely recommend way over this. Um, everything, only down to the, the blade still on this. I don't even know what's in here. And I, and I don't think the box, I don't have the box. I don't think that mentions anything about tools or anything. Maybe the website. I mean, if I had to guess, the, yeah, stainless, stainless steel handle. But they're not mentioning anything about the tools or materials or anything. Uh, even if you go to the website, I, I would highly doubt they have anything other than stainless steel blade. If they even have that. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to get serious and have a multi-tool you're going to be using all the time and stuff, you know, get something of quality. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Leatherman. It could be a Gerber or something. Just a better quality. But again, for that price tag, I think it's worth it. You're getting your money's worth. But there's still issues, obviously, as mentioned. Um, if you have small hands, just stay away from it completely because it is so big and chunky and cumbersome. I mean, this thing, I should have weighed these. This weighs twice this, literally twice. It's not necessary to be so large for no reason. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, you know, it is what it is. Uh, cheap stuff is cheap stuff for a reason. But I still think that there's a lot of people that would get this. This is so much better, like light years better than their $5 version of it, okay? So if you got the $5 version and you're kind of like, eh, it's whatever, definitely get this, you'll love it, you know? Um, but I would say, you know, if you're really into multi-tools and stuff, this will probably be a little bit of a disappointment for you. But again, that price tag should really reflect your expectations of what the tool is gonna offer. But anyway, that is it for now. Um, even though this is an initial impressions video, I'm not sure how long I'll use this. I mean, when I do use multi-tools, I, I just use the good ones that I have. I have a ton of them. Um, so I don't really see myself using this long term, but I'm going to hang on to it. I have no reason to get rid of it anytime soon. So maybe I'll do like a full review down the road or at least an update or something on how it worked out. Obviously, if something breaks, I'll make a video on it. But you may or may not ever hear about this ever again. I don't really know yet. Hard to say. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's it. I just wanted to touch upon this a little bit just in case you happen to be at your Walmart and you're looking at the case like I did and you're kind of curious about it. Well, now you know some of the pros and cons. Uh, that it has to offer and you can make your own uh, decisions as a good consumer so thank you so much for watching the video guys i really do appreciate your time it is very valuable and uh and that's pretty much it it's uh here on the east coast in pennsylvania it's getting cold it snowed a little bit today roads are slick so this is your random warning to be safe driving you know always have to be aware of that kind of stuff i know this is completely random and has nothing to do with this video but it's on my mind because it's snowing outside 
and I had to uh, drive somewhere this morning. It was a little slick, a little, little, little iffy. So it's that time of year, so just a little heads up if you're uh, out there driving, be safe. But anyway, that's it, guys. Hopefully you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.